I've got a little tip for you here in regards to connecting NAMI Wallet to your own Cardano node on Daedalus to make your experience a little bit quicker, a little bit faster when using Sunday Swap, Muzi Swap, or any of these dApps and buying NFTs, whatever it might be, it will make your life just that little bit easier. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get so you're probably thinking, what on earth are you on about, Pete? Why would you want to do anything like this and create a Frankenstein wallet of connecting NAMI wallet to Daedalus so that you can do all these really crazy stuff? Well, any time that I've participated in an NFT drop, one of those really big ones where you're expecting a small window of time to actually get your transactions through, I've always used Daedalus. And that is because when you use Daedalus, it's a full node wallet. It means you have a copy of the blockchain on your computer on this giant beast of a machine I have right here. And I can do the transactions directly to that node. So it means that I have a really quick access to it. It doesn't mean I, it means that I don't need to connect to different servers on the internet, such as Blockfrost or whatever CC Vault are using in their backend as well, or whatever third party service. If that service is busy and their mempool, their bucket of transactions is full, then I won't be able to get my transaction out there. So there've been a couple of delays lately. So let me just pull this up here and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I've mentioned this a little bit earlier and Nami Wallet Alessandro was talking about how their backend is using Blockfrost and it was a little bit clogged up so they had to work out how to scale that which is fantastic. But of course, it still relies on that mempool of Blockfrost and their multiple servers that they have. They have 30 now. And also just the other day, CC Vault reported 2,500 transactions in their mempool and it's gonna take two to four hours to actually process. So if you were participating in an NFT drop and your order was inside that 2,500 transactions, you probably would have missed out on that drop. And uh, for example, Wi-Fi Addicts were doing an NFT uh, drop at 4 a.m. for me. Um, even if I woke up, I probably would have used CC Vault. And that was, yeah, roughly around that time of when the drop actually happened. So I wouldn't have been able to get my transaction through. So that would have been really disappointing. Now, if I knew about this uh, connection of NAMI Wallet to Daedalus, then I may have had a little bit more opportunity to actually get my transaction through because I wouldn't have to rely on that mempool. I wouldn't have to rely on Blockfrost. Don't have to rely on that one there. Now this all came about from a video post that uh, came up and this is from, uh, I, I don't know the developer or the person's name, but it's from Pernus, Pernus Token. Um, you can guess what that's supposed to mean. But this video tutorial that he put up goes through the entire process of actually connecting the NAMI wallet to it. There's a couple of things that caught me up in it and I didn't quite catch it in the video. It's a little, the, the volume ducks down a little bit and I couldn't quite hear it. Other people managed to work it out though, so I don't know how. But I've written a full blog post of this as well. So if you are trying, if, if video isn't your best medium, you can go through this blog post follow the steps there, follow the instructions, copy all the commands and submit it to your terminal or whatever you're doing so that you can get this thing working. And trust me, it's worth getting working. So now I'm gonna take you through the process of setting this up, getting Daedalus set up and working, using PowerShell to get Daedalus and the submit API working so that then you can connect NAMI wallet to it. It's pretty quick and easy to do if you have the right commands and everything ready to go. So let me show you how this is all done. First off, you wanna have Daedalus installed. Go to daedaluswallet.io. If you already have it installed and it's already fully synced, you're ready to go. If you're not, it's gonna take you about 36 hours to get this fully synced. Yes, I said 36 hours. Because it's downloading the entire blockchain to your computer, it's gonna take that long. Now I already have my Daedalus wallet set up. It's already synchronized to the, to the internet and is in line with the blockchain as well. So I'm all good to go there. I don't need to worry about anything else. You don't actually need to set up a wallet either, but you do need to have this running in the background if you want NAMI to connect to it. So that's, that's something I, I should have known. I was trying to run these commands. I was thinking, why is it not working? It's, of course, 
you do need Daedalus on. You do need the node actually interacting so it can talk to it. Silly me. Caught me out the first time, but uh, made sense when I actually sat down and thought about it. So now that you have Daedalus running, you're going to download a couple of files and they're all in the links here. You can get this at the GitHub repo from Import Apple HK. This is the Cardano node. So I have it here and we need to download the Windows executable. So I'll scroll down to here. I can download this. It will take me off to this uh, Hydra IOHK website. I can here download the zip executable, save that to my local computer and I'm good to go. So I just save that to my documents folder on my computer there. Great, so once that's downloaded, you will have it in your documents folder and now you can unzip that, which I already have done here. Now, a little tip here for you, when you're unzipping this file, if you have virus scanning software, it will actually pick up some of the files and put them into Quarantine Vault. So I had Norton Antivirus on. It picked up a couple of the files, removed them from them each time I unzipped it. So you have to put it on the whitelist so it doesn't take it away. You do need those files there. It's a false positive because you do need these. It's an unknown file within the system and Norton Antivirus or whatever you're using is trying to protect you. So it's doing the right thing but you do need them for this process. They're safe to use, it's okay. All node operators, all stateful operators do use these particular files to actually get them running. So let's have a look at exactly what we need to do now and next in the tutorial. So we've downloaded our file and I've extracted it to my documents folder. Great, so that's that step there. Let's continue down here. Now I now need to actually download a configuration file and that comes directly from that same repository. So I'll just click back. I scroll up to Cardano Submit API. And I come to this particular folder here and I go to config and this is the configuration I need. So I can click on that one, right click on raw and save link as. That will allow me to save that particular file as a YAML file, so make sure that extension is correct. That also caught me up at the first time and I can save it into the same file directory where I've extracted that initial zip file. So I can save it there. So now that I have the executable file, I have the configuration file all in one place, I can now start this up and get it working and run a couple of commands so this will work. So like I mentioned before, you have to make sure Daedalus is running. I have Daedalus running in the background here, so it's all good for me, it's all good to go. So let me get the commands here and fire up Power Terminal. So to do this, you need to go to Power Terminal. So open up Power Terminal, or just type in Power, right click, run as a, click yes, and there we go. So this is quite large, let me just put it onto the side here. There we go, that looks good. So first off, if you just copy these commands, it will take you to the right spots. Uh, but I'll explain what's happening. So it's, this is CD change directory to home. So that's where my home directory is. Then I'll change to the documents folder. And then I'll change over to that zip file, that folder that I created when I'm extracting the executable. Great, so I'm in that particular folder now. Now I need to run these particular commands here. So this first one here sets the env environment variable for the node. So I'm just gonna paste that in. Great, looks good. Now this next command here tests if that first one works. So if I paste this in, I should see this little bit of text appear. So I'm just going to press paste, enter, great. That is a really good indicator that it works. So the first time I was doing this, I didn't have Daedalus enabled, not uh, up and running. So this wouldn't appear. So this actually looks for where the uh, Daedalus is running, looks for a particular ID number and connects that connection for you. So the next bit here, I now need to run the submit API, the executable for the uh, submit API. I'll press paste, enter. Great. Now this bit here, running server on localhost of the 127.0.0.1 at port 
port 8090 that means this is running now so if you want to run the Daedalus node and the NAMI wallet extension you do have to have this continuously connected like this so you need to have that PowerShell on and enabled so this is a bit of a setup that you have to do before these big NFT drops or if you're or before you are interacting with various dApps or uh, whatever it might be so you do have to get this all working and running in the background before you actually do any of this so now that I have that up and running, I can go to my NAMI wallet. I can click on settings, click on network. And here I can add in the address for my submit API. So I've written that down here as well. Just a little bit down here. So all the instructions there. So you can copy that, go to your NAMI wallet and paste that in there. Click on that little custom node checkbox and click on apply and you're good to go. Now you should probably test this and see if it actually works. So now what you can do is you can go back to your wallet, click on your receiving address, which is your own address and click on send. So now I am going to send myself, let's say I'm sending myself to ADA so I can actually see this appear. Test with Daedalus. Great. Send, put in my sending password. And there we go. So that's my transaction that's just gone through. So I accidentally did it twice, but you can see there that it's gone through and it's just that particular fee. And let's check the metadata. Test with Daedalus. There we go. So we know that's gone through. We know that's working. And that's gone through the Daedalus node as opposed to going off to Blockfrost servers or to the CC Vaults servers there. So, so now you can take that further. You can now connect your NAMI wallet to something like Carter Hub. There we go. And we can now list NFTs on here. So try it out if you want something a little bit different a different way of getting through and bypassing all these congestion issues that you might be having and interacting with various dApps such as Carter Hub here. Try it out. Let me know what you think. If you find this tutorial useful and you have found that your interactions with the blockchain have been fast because of it, please let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think of this tutorial and if you really like any of this Cardano related content, please give me that thumbs up, click subscribe, click on the notification bell, and you hear more from me real soon. Yeah, yeah, I gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like, but this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debate.